Dude, that was sick. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Luke Holland. I'm out of breath. Hi, guys. Yeah. How is everyone? <laughs> so how many years did we text an email back and forth until we finally got you out here? 10, 12 at least. 10 or 12 years. Yeah. You were just a, a, a 10 year old boy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been at least two years. Uh, right. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Awesome. So. Well, you've been busy touring the globe, playing <sighs> sessions, filming videos. Yeah, it's been Bil hard work, man. Yeah. It's cool. Been, uh, it's been a good time. Awesome. So if you don't know Luke Holland, uh, you should definitely check him out. He's got a YouTube channel with tons of playing exactly like that. Tons of really, really, really well produced uh, covers, original tracks. That was a track from Jason Richardson. The song was called Fragments. Is that correct? That is correct. And we're going to be playing another song um, from Jason Rich Richardson later as well. Yes, we are. Awesome. So yeah, check out Luke on, uh, on YouTube. It's Luke Holland Drums. Check him out on Instagram. It's Luke Holland with two Ds. Or check him out on Twitter as well. Uh, obviously, for any of these lessons, we get to work with some great companies. So we have DW Drums, Remo, Minel Cymbals, Vader Sticks, and uh, your in-ears. Yes. 364 in-ears. 360, 64. 360, 64. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're hidden by my... Uh... By the towel that's on my head currently, nice. and, and it's making me sweat a lot. Yeah. But, you know. Cool. They're beautiful. 64 Audio. DW, Mino, Remo, Vader, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much. You guys make so much cool stuff happen, and I appreciate you guys. Awesome. So before we get into the lesson, we got, we got an incredible lesson, okay? So Luke has a bunch of signature beats, fills, and stuff, and he's going to teach some stuff that he actually did in the, his covers. Uh, so if you've, if you've been a follower of his videos, you're going to you know, get those broken down, uh, especially the new, the new Kendrick Lamar cover yeah. you just did. Uh, so you're going to get all that, uh, a few of those broken down, which is going to be really, really cool, and you're going to play some more tracks as well. But before we get into that, dude, you have to tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Just like give a quick version, how you got started, how you got to where you are today, because you were kind of like one of those like rising star success stories, wouldn't you say? I don't know. I would I say, <laughs> I would say you went from like you know here, and you really were diligent in putting putting up videos and engaging with the community, and that is true. Practicing, I'm sure. Lots of practicing. That is, you know, it's funny. People uh, always forget that that's the number one thing is right. getting good at your instrument. But uh, yeah, okay, a little bit about myself. Yeah. Um, name's Luke Holland. Uh, Luke. I've been drumming since <laughs> I was 11. Um, yeah, it kind of all started, I was in a, a local band called Oceans Will Part forever ago. I was like 15 or something. Yeah. And my singer was like, yo, you should uh, put some stuff on to a YouTube channel so you can help promote our band. And I was like, no, don't want to do that. Sounds dumb. Right. So I did it. And uh, yeah, I, I did uh, an August Burns Red song and a Texas in July song. And it got a few thousand views. And I, I was absolutely shocked. I did not expect anything. And it kind of just kept going. I ended up filling in for Texas in July, which at the time, Adam Gray um, was my favorite drummer. And it was so crazy. I, I was 16. I, I took a week off school, flew to Pennsylvania, and filled in for my favorite drummer. Um, got a call from him. That's and uh, Yeah, it was, it, was, it was crazy, man. And that kind of started everything. People saw that and saw that I wasn't just some, like, YouTube, like, you know, behind-the-scenes, edited, yeah. fake kind of stuff. Uh, people got to see me play live. And then I continued to do the YouTube thing. I um, went through multiple cinematographers, audio guys. Yeah. And I did a Skrillex song called Cinema that really kind of skyrocketed everything from there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was my first, I would say, viral video. I think it's at almost 6 million views or something now. Huh. But um, The Word Alive, a metalcore band based out of Arizona, saw it and asked me to join their band, and I toured with them for about five years all over the world, yeah. played some massive festivals and things like that. And uh, yeah, I just kind of continued to make videos based off of what I want to do and my desire for being creative and, and all that stuff while touring and maintaining that live awesome. feel. Yeah. Cool, and, and congrats, because I know you just hit 60 million views on YouTube. I did, that was Boom. today, yes. I must feel good. Thank you so much. I yeah, it blew my mind. Um, I was just talking to my mom actually about. Oh, you can hear that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was talking to my mom about it, and we were just like, "Wow, that's so crazy." Because I've been doing it since 2009, mm -hmm. which is a pretty long time when I think about it. 
And yeah, it's just so cool, man. Thank you guys, whoever's watching. Like, seriously, it's an honor to uh, have fans supporting and stuff. Yeah, awesome. And thank you for coming here. Oh, yeah. dude, it's my pleasure. It's yeah. like I said, it's a long time coming, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. everyone, we whenever we we post these videos, so many of you say thank you. You love the lesson, but then you also want to give your ideas on who we should invite next. And over the years, like your name has come up multiple times. Really? Oh, many, many hundreds, if if not. Billions of times. Billions, dude. How many Billions guys have you had in here? <laughs> Jeez. So it's good that we finally got it done. Yes, I'm so thankful to be here, man. Yeah, man. Okay, we're going to get into some uh, teaching here. And so we, we basically prepared 10 different, call them exercises, call them whatever you want, but they're kind of like Luke's signature grooves and ideas on the kit. And I think the, the idea here, or the, the end goal for anyone watching is, yes, you can try and play the stuff exactly like that, but it, it's really cool if it inspires you to maybe create something on your own, you know, something that's unique to yourself. And so take these as like seeds that we're planting, work on the stuff, because it's a, some really, really cool stuff that, that he prepared. You. And he's just gonna play it like he, it's the, you know, it's gonna look so super easy, and like he's done it, uh, you know, or like, it, it just, it looks easy when you do it, but it's really, really hard, some of the coordination <laughs> stuff. I'm gonna mess it up on purpose just for you. <laughs> So let's get right into it. So the, the, the first exercise we're going to talk about is the Kendrick Lamar. And this is from your most recent cover? Yes, the, the second Humble? most recent. Okay. Um, came out just a couple weeks ago. Cool. Um, so a uh, little disclaimer here. I played this on a seven piece. Now, I, we transposed it to a four piece, which is what I've used for most of my German career. Um, the seven piece is a, br a brand new thing. So I'm just going to do this all on the one rack tom. Um, if you watch the video, you'll see me bounce between my two first rack toms, but yeah. that's not what's going down right now. So just wanted to throw that out for you guys. Um, okay. Why don't you, maybe you could play it first up to speed and then we'll just talk a little bit about what's happening. Sure. Here we go. So when you originally came up with that, was it something just like, oh, I should play this because it sounds best with that? It, uh, it was one of those things, okay, so if you look at it, if you break it down, it's based off of a paradiddle diddle. Um, okay. I believe the first time you take off the very, very last left stroke, so it's right, left, right, right, left, instead of doing that double at the very end. And it just kind of came out, um, you know, I'm experimenting on this new seven piece and I wanted to and that first cover that people saw of my seven piece kit, I wanted to let them hear all the different sounds. So I was kind of messing around with the toms as much as I could. And then later on in the, in the same cover, I do this same groove all the way down the toms, um, down the five toms. So uh, yeah, just, this is one of those ones that kind of just came out, nice. just happened. And I, I'm looking at the sheet music, I think maybe it is the full paradiddle diddle, but maybe if we can just play it slowly and, we'll, and hear how, exactly how it sounds. Oh yeah, it is totally. But uh, I kind of, so I think it's in 16th, um, and then there's like a, so. It does split. Yeah, yeah. It does yeah. split on the second bar. Exactly, so, so slow, yeah. it's. Uh, Way harder. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, you know, it depends. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice, Let's, do, you wanna, do you wanna play it a little bit slower? Totally, here we go. Awesome. Yeah, so for those watching, the, the main thing to note is I think count one and count three uh, of the, at least the first bar are eighth notes. And then everything else is pretty much sixteenth notes. Other than the second bar, it changes. So it's a nice, it, that's why I think it flows so nicely, hey? Yeah, it, I, I like that one. Uh, that's why I chose to kind of come and bring it. I, I just feel like you could do, like you brought up, so much stuff with that. Um, right. it's, it's all based off of a paradiddle diddle, which Right. To me, in, in my opinion, any six-stroke roll, any variation of a six-stroke is like infinite with all the things you can do with it. Right. So, yeah, I love this one. Awesome. Uh, do you mind just playing it up to speed again, maybe fast? And you can actually move it around the, the toms. Sure. The high and low. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Here we go. Awesome. 
Awesome. All right, let's move on to the next one. This one is uh, the 1975 Me, and this was from uh, a, a recent cover as well, correct? This one was, I want to say, a year and a half ago, maybe, a year ago. And I did it with uh, the singer of Peripheries named Spencer, um, Taylor Larson, who produced... Oh, I didn't produce, mixed and mastered the Jason Richardson album yeah. that I did drums on. And uh, this guy named Elijah Gibb, um, another very talented singer. And we all kind of just came together. Taylor one day texted me. He's like, I want to do a 1975 cover. It's like, deal. I love that band. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I improvised this actually during the filming. I find myself improvising a lot of stuff the last couple of years. Yeah. It just feels more natural to me than kind of drilling the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this, this one just kind of came out and it's simple and it, it just feels really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Let's hear how it sounds. Cool. So that's very different than the, the last one you showed us. What, what was your thought process between the hi-hat splash? Because that's not something you see a lot. Yeah, you know, I saw, shoot, who did it? I think it was Chris Coleman being just a total badass uh, with all the, all the crazy stuff. He's just soloing over that, tss, 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 you know, that whole thing, which I think is incredible. That's just another dimension of independence. Yeah. And I... I, I had been messing with it at the time. Usually all the stuff I write for this kind of stuff or for my online YouTube videos is things that I was diving into at the time. Yeah. So for me, it's fun to go back and watch it because I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I was practicing that at that time or I was doing those rudiments or whatever. So this was something I was into at the time, was working with that. And I just wanted to incorporate that into a slower song to get a nice feel out of it. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. Do you mind playing it just for a few more bars? Oops. Care if I drop my stick first? No, absolutely. Okay. We gotta restart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. That's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it sounds like a, an excuse. Actually, I'm not gonna make an excuse. I messed it's it up. It's the high hat stand. It's really old. It's it's not what you're used to. I already know what you're gonna uh, say. No, dude, this thing's brand new. What are you talking no, about? No, it's brand old. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's cool. Let, let's uh, let's move on. The next one we're gonna do is uh, "I See Stars," um, "White Lies," and this is like an original drum piece. Yes, I did this album uh, December of. 2015, mm -hmm. um, the singer Devin Oliver of Icy Stars contacted me to do drums for this song or for this album, and this was one of my favorite things that I came up with through the whole album. Um, this in a groove off a song called "Light in the Cave," but that's totally relevant. Right. Yeah. So that's here cool. we go, full speed. Here we go. So, because you've, it's, it sounds like a lot of what you play is gospel chops. Is that the linear thing or is that some other inspiration? Like Chris Coleman, Aaron Spears, another, another drummer? You know, I think it came from, uh, I'll probably talk about this 13 times during this video, but <laughs> I think it came from my time in drumline. I marched drumline for a year and a half and I, I marched snare, I played traditional. Mm -hmm. And I barely touched my kit at that time. I uh, stepped back away from the kit, I practiced the whole world of rudiments and dynamics I didn't even know existed, because at the time I was just playing my favorite bands. Right. And I came back to the kit afterwards and I was just like, wait a second, there's yeah. so much more you can do, it's crazy. So a lot of this stuff was kind of inspired around the stuff I learned in Drumline and just manipulating rudiments and maintaining the very strict stick heights that I learned in Drumline, keeping those dynamics very stiff. Um, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Do I play it a little bit slower? Yep. Here we go.
Cool. I love that little like left hand going underneath yeah. to hit that. Thanks. You can't even you can't even really see if you're hitting or not. I was like double checking to make sure you're on the machine. <laughs> it's a ghost hat. It's a yeah. new thing. Ghost hat. Exactly. New trend. Guys, is there a drumio towel we can get him? Oh, I'm good, dude. No, I'll just no. sweat my life away. Wow, come on now. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, now the next one we have is a, a signature chop. This one is something with like three note groupings. It yes. Starts with unison and yep. This is a fun one. I think this one is actually like I know there's there's drummers of all skill levels watching, but um, yeah, throw it in here. Oh, you guys! Yeah, you see, guys, see, you didn't have to do that. You know the, the deal with these is is you put them over your neck like this. And it's like the it's like the uh, the hockey night in Canada thing. <laughs> and then you do your after after game. Interview. Yes, dude. Thank you, <laughs> Dave. You're you're a, a saint, a scholar, and a gentleman. I just, appreciate you. Just so you know, this is going to be on eBay as uh, a towel with <laughs> Luke Holland sweat. I better just wipe my armpits with it, and make it real nasty. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay. Back to the drum. <laughs> what I was saying is, there's drummers of all skill levels. For you beginner drummers looking at like a starting point to play some of this type of stuff. This is one of those grooves. Looks challenging, but Luke will slow it down and you'll see it's like, it's quite simple when you figure out what the pattern is. So uh, why don't you take it away? Here we go. That just sounds so easy. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, that one's a little random and mm -hmm. kind of unnecessarily complicated, but I think it sounds cool. It gives it, uh, with that over here on the stack, and then you have the, um, every other hi-hat hit, I believe, is yeah. opening and closing. So it's definitely a lot going on at once, but that snare with the backbeat gives it a nice groove. Yeah. And for those of you watching the sheet music, there's two versions. So the first version has no open hi-hat, the second version has the open hi-hat. I don't know if we got that one clipped out, but... Yes, why don't you switch to that one? So we can, uh, maybe, do, do you mind just playing the one with the open hi-hat now that that's on? Sure, yeah. Me? Cool. Here we go. I got a little ambitious there. <laughs> so if you see it, this is when I first figure out the pattern, and I don't know if you, people watching have, have figured this out. It's unison, bass, right, left. And then Correct? bass, right, I believe, so. Yeah, unison, bass, right, left, yep. unison, and then bass, right, left, and then. And then it repeats. And then it repeats again. Yep. So if you just play like super slow, I mean, it sounds, it sounds like incredibly fast and complicated there, but you can totally get it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Do you mind just playing it like super slow? So yeah, yeah, closed or open hats? Let's do, let's do uh, closed. Okay, here we go. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. So this one has got the, the threes and the hi-hat. Yes. This is more of a, a groove, I would say, than a, than a chop. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Where is, so what inspired this one? This is one, again, I just kind of pulled this one out. I love, if you guys have watched my stuff, uh, I love doing the one and a two and a three and a four right. on anything. I think it just feels and sounds so cool. I'm kind of addicted to it. So this one I just kind of decided I would run with it. Mm -hmm. And the hardest part, I think, is at the very, very end, there's the four snare hits, um, all accented with the uh, one and uh, on the right hand, so. Do you bring up your left foot to hit some of those? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you meant the hi-hat, now I'm I just look like an idiot. I know, because I'm such a loser <laughs> at making stupid, stupid jokes. Gosh dang it. All right. So here we go. All right. Let's see if I can do this. That one has 
have some almost like funk influences in it, hey? Yeah. With that, the, that faster hi-hat? Took, uh, that one took some concentration for sure. <laughs> yeah, that one, yeah, that was rough. You chose, you chose one of the harder ones for your <laughs> lesson. <laughs> so so what, how, what, how do you recommend a, a drummer, like a beginner, maybe intermediate drummer getting started with something like this? The biggest thing for me for that particular you know, for, for tackling this one right here, is the threes on the hand, which yeah. by threes I mean groupings of three, which is just one and a two and a three and a four. If you aren't comfortable with doing that over anything, then my biggest piece of advice would, so this groove we have one, two, three, four, right? So I would just do something real basic like keeping the backbeat on three and maybe take out all the ghost notes and the opening of the hats and just do like this. Right, so remove certain elements of the Yeah, the yeah, line. or even if you're if that's too much for you too, obviously slow it down, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but if just take out all the fanciness and just do maybe two and four, just to get that right hand constant for the entire time. Because yeah. you don't even want to be thinking about your right hand when you're doing stuff like this. It should all be, uh, for, at least for me, I focus on my right foot and my left hand doing all the hard work. And then my right hand just kind of doing this. And it's just a motion and my fingers, they've all gotten so used to it, I don't even have to think about my right hand. So yeah. that's the point you eventually want to achieve if possible. Um, it is possible, what am I talking about? Uh, yeah. Impossible. It's, nobody can do it, not even me. <laughs> You know, the, um, I did, we did some stuff with Thomas Lang once, and he always talks about linear and then nonlinear coordination. And this one of those things that is uh, nonlinear yeah. coordination, it, and it's actually much harder than people think. People think linear drumming is the hardest. I think this is harder with those four snare hits at the end. I think so too. Yeah. 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 Thomas's nonlinear stuff that he does is is just ridiculous. Yeah. So crazy. Awesome. Um, do you mind just playing it a little bit slower? I know it's a it's a tough one, but yeah, yeah, I'll give I'll give it you know give my it, darndest. Give it your all. Here we go. So cool, but freakishly hard. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, uh, next one is Jason Richardson's uh, Hose Down. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, what? Sorry, this is from the song Hose Down. Yes. Okay. So, what part? Oh, so I think it's in uh, it's in the verses of the songs or of the song. So that song is all over the place. It's like I think almost seven minutes long. Okay. So the hardest part about this is uh, knowing that. It's all left hand lead between the snare and the floor tom. I'm starting everything when it comes to the snare and the floor with my left hand. So I'm doing groups of left, right, left, or left, right, rather than leading everything right, left, right, right, left. So, uh, and also this is kind of non-linear because I'm doing groups of three on my feet, but on the first hit, I'm doing a stack hit with, with the one. So, da, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll demonstrate for you guys. Okay. Cool, here we go. Okay, you gotta play that one slower. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. So here is that pattern slow. It's like it's always hard when you used to playing something and you go to teach it. It's like, ah, oh, how do you like slow it down and yeah, go from like yeah. 100 miles an hour to, yeah, to 30? That's a tough one to do. Okay, next one we're going to talk about is uh, Justin Bieber's "Sorry." So you chose a, a Justin Bieber song, and we're actually going to play a Bieber song. A we bit. are, we are. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So you know, people give Justin Bieber a lot of crap. I actually really like a lot of his music, and uh, this was one. 
that people on my YouTube channel and people in person have come up to me at shows and they've named it the Monster Phil. Right. It's just what people named it. So I think that's really cool. Thank you guys for naming something that's tight. <laughs> um, so this one is pretty, this one was meant, when I was writing this piece, it was meant to be over the top, super flashy, yeah. and uh, for, for both a non-drummer and a drummer, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's, that's important to think about um, when you're approaching YouTube videos and stuff, which is a whole other category I'm not gonna get into. But uh, yeah, this is it, full speed. Okay. Maybe we should try a few rotations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm going to do this nice and slow. Starts off with the paradiddles, and then it's doing this weird thing over here. So. Nice. So, so when you when you record that video and you record that fill, is it just improvised? It probably is at the time, right? That one was not. That one I knew the part in the song. It was building up to just it was perfect for just an over the top drum fill. Right. And then it kind of opens up right after that. So that was kind of some some composition uh, yeah. snaz, I guess. So then you have to practice that a bunch before you go into actually filming it. You know that one was kind of based off of some fraction fill ideas that I've done in the past. It kind of just came together to form the awesome. monster fill. Nice. <laughs> um, we're actually going to be filming some, a course with you tomorrow on some of their, yes. how you come up with some of these fills, like more in depth. Like You just mentioned fraction fills and stuff. So for those watching who are uh, Drumio Edge members, uh, get ready for that. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one because we're getting short on time here. So we have the... This just random, another random signature fill. Yes, this is um, one of the ones that I sat down and just came up with. This came out, so here we go. Okay. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Awesome. Do you, want, do you want to try a little bit slower too? Yep. Here we go. So there's lots of like within your drumming. Something one thing I notice is there's lots of like space. Like you actually use chord. Like there's a quarter note in there. Yeah. Which you wouldn't think to add something like that and just take a break. Yeah, I think I think space is something uh, in the last two maybe two years of my playing that I've learned is so important and so valuable. Yeah. Uh, that before I didn't. Um, I'm not sure where that transition came, um, but I'm glad it did. Space is like. Crucial, man. It's yeah. it's a beautiful thing. It makes the other notes like fly, pop. like yeah, pop even more. Yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. Awesome. Okay, the next one um, is, I believe this is what, uh, what you're, the song you're gonna be playing at the end. You're gonna be playing a song called Retrograde, yes. correct? So this is a fill from that. Yeah. So this is one of those ones that all the music stops and it's just drums by itself in the song. Yeah. So this is like I try to get ultimate flashy with it. So. Here we go. So this is at normal speed. Again. We're going to have to try that one. Slower, slower. <laughs> <laughs> so slow it is. It's based off of paradiddle diddles. Right. And then so two single strokes diddles. right at the end. Uh, no, two paradiddle diddles. Yeah, three paradiddle diddles. Three paradiddle diddles, diddles yeah. and then some fraction stuff at the very end. Cool. Which is just uh, groups of four, four two. yeah, four, four, two on the hands. Awesome. So here we go. Yeah. See, when you play it slower, it makes way more sense. <laughs> <laughs> see, for me, I I'm like, oh God, where am I I'm in in the phrase? So I'm glad. That's that's comforting. Yeah. Do you mind just do it, rotating it a, a few times so we can hear it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. It 
just yeah, it just goes to show you how much more flashy it sounds with just speed added. Exactly, right? exactly. That's so cool. Uh, last one. It's a double bass chop. Oh Very yes. Large. Okay, so this one is just got all sorts of stuff going on. You got some flams. Um, and then a majority of the groove or the fill is based off of paradiddles and you're accenting 1E, 2E, 3E or whatever it might be. So this is it, normal speed. Okay. Here we go again. Nice, do you mind just trying that slower? I know yeah. like it's a, I'm a broken record. So. No, you're fine. I, I, uh, I appreciate you telling yeah. me because, you know, it's good to hear. Here we go. Awesome. Yeah, one thing I like the what you do a lot of is the use of ghost notes. Really like soft strokes mixed, mixed in with the accented notes. Thank you. That gives it lots of texture. I, I love dynamics is like what I preach to my yeah. students at home. Yeah. Some of you guys are watching. Hello. Because <laughs> you play a lot of uh, like you played a lot of metal and, and prog and like harder music, and so that's something that a lot of people when they think of like metal or, or that type of stuff, it's like lacking dynamics. It's yeah. one, one volume, right? Yeah. And it's high and yep. triple mezzo. What is it? Triple forte or something? Too so. much forte, I think it's called. <laughs> Too much forte. Nice man. So with all this stuff, <clears throat> someone really likes your drumming, like your style. They want to get into it. What, what would you suggest is like? starting point for them? You know, I think, uh, like I was, I know, now I'm sounding like a broken record. Um, I call it prior knowledge. Yeah. So it's, I'm gonna set the sticks down for this one. So you can't expect to sit down and play all this stuff if you don't know what you're playing, right? If you're gonna learn the stickings and you're like, I don't even know what I'm, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna sound fluid and, and natural. So for me, prior knowledge, I learned as many rudiments and the dynamics to the rudiments, most importantly, every rudiment has a dynamic to it. And I drilled those over and over and over. And eventually, with lots of practice and time, you'll start throwing kicks in between or on top of them and mixing the rudiments up. And that's where you know a lot of that comes. But start with your dynamics, start with your rudiments. It sucks, none of it's fun. Um, but man, it'll make you so much better. It'll make your playing uh, stand out more and be more unique. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's what that's what most people want at the end of the day is to be their own drummer. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They want to. Well, what I think what a lot of people see is they see you flying around the kit, and it looks easy. As if some of those last fills you did are, are crazy, but. Um, so many people don't realize how much time you spent, like in drumline, learning the paradiddle diddle, <laughs> learning the single paradiddle. You said you took a year out, year and a half off the drum set, and literally just played yeah. that. And so, um, like that's a lot of time and effort and prior knowledge and building a foundation. So. It was, and it, and it, what's crazy about it, it wasn't intentional. I just, mm -hmm. I and, and not like I never touched my drum set, but I rarely did. I was always doing. Drumline. I was always doing rehearsals and practices and all that stuff. So awesome! Thanks for sharing that. My pleasure. Yeah. Um, so for those of you watching, uh, we're going to get into some questions soon. So if you are inside the, the Drumio members area, you can go ahead and, and fire off your questions. We'll get to as many of them as possible. If you're not, you can join us for free trial. It's drumio.com forward slash trial. I'm also doing an interview with Luke after this. That's uh, or tomorrow, I should say. Uh, that's inside of the only inside of the Drumio members area, as well as some of the other exclusive stuff that we're filming. So if you aren't a student, you can sign up for free, get a free trial, try it out. If you don't like it, you can cancel. If you like it, stay with us forever. I want everyone to stay with us forever, obviously, <laughs> including me. I think. <laughs> you want to stay? Is this it? Is this where I, this is my life now? Yeah, is Drumio for the rest of my life. Yes. Cool. Yeah, you're, we're cool going to we're going to handcuff your your legs to the chair and tie you to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Well, on that note, <laughs>
Great, Thank man. you. Awesome. Let's ready to get into some questions. Ask me questions. All right. So the first one's from Basilo. He says, "What are you currently practicing or struggling with?" Ooh. Okay. So something that I have not delved very deep into, kind of a shame to admit it, honestly, is jazz. Mm -hmm. um, I never was very keen on on jazz music, to be honest. Just you know, and uh, it's not really something that I've I've taken the time to sit down and learn, um, which I know it's something I need to learn because that's kind of like a whole separate area of drumming that is, I, when I see people play jazz, I'm just blown away. Like how? That's just like a different instrument almost. So why? T explain more, like why do you think it's something you need to learn how to play? Because, okay, this is a, a very important thing because I always say versatility is key. It's so important. Nowadays, you know, there's so many musicians and so many outlets to get your name known and this is who I am, this is what I'm capable of, that you have to be able to do as much as you can. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like turning in a resume, just being like, oh, I can do this one thing and that's it. And it's like, well, you know, we want you to do multiple things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. Uh, so that's something that I need to stop being stubborn and just finally do. Yeah. yeah. So what, what do you do to, uh, maybe I shouldn't ask a lot of questions, but I can ask you questions <laughs> later. <laughs> There's lots of questions here. Uh, from Andrew Douglas, he says, uh, sometimes when I play songs with more intricate drumming, everything feels good. And then when I go to play trickier parts, my body locks up and the parts come out choppy or barely at all. Is this just an issue of needing more practice or is, some, is there something else that could help? I think two things immediately that stuck out to me is understanding what you're playing yeah. is so important. And the second thing to understanding what you're playing is taking the time to play it slow and be like, okay, you hear this cool fill that somebody might be doing and you're trying to imitate, but you don't know what they're doing, so you play your own version of it and um, you know it's probably not coming out the cleanest. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, just slow it down. Maybe YouTube some videos of the drummer playing it live or um, yeah. Um, this one's from Mauricio. He says, why change from the four-piece kit to the beautiful monster that you're playing now? <laughs> the beautiful monster, I love it. Uh, good question. Because I am so comfortable on a four-piece, that bugs me. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. That was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted whatever I was going to do next to be kind of the, the shock factor. You know, people be like, whoa, I didn't expect that. That's, that's kind of left field. So that's, that's the main reason. I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, and uh, it certainly has done that. It's like playing a whole different instrument, man. Like yeah. placement of everything has changed dramatically, and uh, just all the different tones. Um, actually, speaking of tones, um, the person who recommended that I get more sounds, I was talking to Tony Oyster Jr. about it, and he was like, I was like, dude, what do I need to do? And he's like, you need more sounds. Huh. And that was like the biggest influence for, for me getting the seven piece. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Test the Beat says, what has helped you so far in your drumming career? Ooh. It's a broad question. It's a very broad question. I was about to say, I wish we could um, dive into that more. If it's the social media, um, that kind of side, or the actual playing side, both I could talk about for an hour. Choose, choose two. Okay. So I think uh, social media or getting your name out there and known, the most important thing besides, of course, your playing and being a solid player, mm -hmm. is being likable and not being a jerk or somebody that nobody wants to hang out with, right? Because when you go on tour, you are cooped up in the same, but well, you know, it might be a bus, it might be a van, depends on how you're touring. Yeah. And if you don't like that person that you're touring with and living two months at a time with in a confined space, you know, they're not gonna hire you if they don't like you. Yeah. So that's very important. Um, as for the actual playing, uh, I think keeping a very open mind to music is crucial. Mm -hmm. Being able to appreciate different genres and apply what each genre does to your own playing. And that's kind of what I've been trying to do. Like you're talking about ghost notes mm -hmm. and metal and stuff like that. Uh, I've been trying to take different elements and you know, put them into my playing so it sounds unique and not just like blast beats, 
you know, just all that kind of stuff. Or if I'm going to the funk stuff, throwing in some of that weird stuff that I learned from playing fast and yeah. intricate. So and you can tell those influences, you know, like in Justin Bieber, you went to the bossa pattern on, on your bass drum, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then the, the one uh, groove with the three notes, it sounds very like 70s funk, if you played it a little bit differently, but you're kind of taking those influences and putting them into these new modern styles. Sweet. So pretty cool. Thank you, man. Um, this is from Pablo Fallas. He says, uh, you're really successful now. But what kept you motivated initially? Ooh. This is what a lot of people struggle with, including myself. Um, and to see someone like touring and, and f like full on doing it, like making it a living, um, it takes a lot of motivation and yes, perseverance. Yes, it does. So, it is not easy, I can tell you that. Pablo, right? Yes. Pablo, wherever you are out there <laughs> in the world. Um, yes. So, uh, motivation is something that's not the easiest to find, you know. Uh, I think that it sounds it sounds ridiculous, but breakups motivate okay. because success is is the number one motivational factor, right? Yeah. Like I want to be successful. Who doesn't want to be successful? I nobody wants to be unsuccessful. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so just different things in my life that were happening and and. It just made me want to come home and be like, I'm gonna get super good at drums, mm -hmm. which I'm still working on it. But I want to get, I want to be the best, which there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. But that's just kind of that was my motivation is to be successful. And I know that's that's kind of a stupid answer, but it's just always, always, I've just always wanted to be successful. Yeah. I guess we're gonna go deeper on this tomorrow. Yes, we uh, are. I have some, I have many, many follow up questions uh, for <laughs> that because I'm, I'm interested. Especially with uh, like the new the new modern way of doing this, because like the old way of doing this is like join a band in, in your local town and start playing gigs and yep. you know and then, then big. Play, play on the jazz bandstand and the, yep. but now it's like completely changed the, the path to success totally yeah and so it's always interesting to talk to people about it. Uh, let's take one more and then we got a, another song. This you don't have to do this if you don't want, but I thought it was a good. I'm not going to ask you to do Well, I'm kind of going to ask you to do a oh, solo. Oh, well, you have to now. <laughs> it says, Kyle Drummer says, if possible, can you try and do a jazz solo like comping in fours? I'm curious to see oh, the God. ideas. <laughs> no, I, that's the thing. I wouldn't even know where to start. It's right. pathetic. Okay, here's another one then. Okay. Uh, from Dano, he says, what's your best go-to beat that you like to play? Oh. Like, what's your number when someone says, sit down and play at the drums, what is like the first thing that happens? got to be something. Let's find out. <laughs> uh, ooh, I know one. I love this one, and I still haven't really found a place to put it, I don't think, but yeah. here we go. I like that, just that feel, kind of dancey, you know? Nice. There you go. Luke, thank you so much. For it coming. has been a pleasure. Thank you, Jared. Yeah. Dromeo. It's been great. Thank you to all the, the companies that helped out, DW and Remo, Minel, Vatter, In-Ears. Yes. If you want to sign up to Drumeo, you should check it out. If not, it's fine. <laughs> do, <you> do it, <laughs> do it. I have 13 subscriptions. You do? Yeah. That's the only reason we're still alive. <laughs> I've subscribed to you guys so many times. Awesome. Uh, so the last song you're going to be playing is from the, uh, your project with Jason Richardson. Is yes, that right? yes. And this one's called Retrograde. Yes, it is. Awesome. This one in the studio when we were writing the song, the pre-pro name was, was called Left Foot Action okay. because Jason wanted a song where my left foot was just going the whole dang time. Oh man, this one took a lot of time. This is one of those things, like I heard this and I was like, that's not possible. It is possible, but I don't want to learn it. So I had to take the time and sit down 
And I would do it on the floor. I'd take my feet and just, you know, it'd be, uh, well, you'll see. But awesome. yeah, it took a lot of time to do this one. Awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run in there. Cool. So just let me, uh, before you go, just let me get out. And then yeah, you're sure. all by Here we yourself. Go. No. <laughs> 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 